Hello and welcome to Relatively Crafty, a knitting podcast. I'm your host, Christy. I come to you from the Denver area of Colorado, where I live with my husband, Ron, our two daughters, Tatum and Delaney, our tuxedo kitty, Lilu, and our Padango puppy, Sophie. Welcome. If you're looking for me on Ravelry, I am Christy Dash Lael, and on Instagram, I am Christy Lael without the dash. Uh, this is a knitting podcast. I have a slew of things to show you and share with you. Um, so I think I should just kind of get into it. I Yeah, a lot of things to show you, but not a single one of them is an FO. I don't have any FOs, but I needed a podcast because um, I've got a lot of things that I've been working on and things that I've gotten and plans that I've kind of made, and I'm kind of excited about sharing them, and you guys are my best knitting friends. <laughs> I don't have a lot of real-life knitting friends. I do have a couple, um, and I've already shared these with them, so I need to share them more. Um... I sometimes see these uh, mothers and daughters or sisters that that knit together and um, or mothers and sons and sisters and brothers. And um, and I always, I, you know, I think, gosh, it would be kind of nice to to be able to um, have my kids knit and 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 share that with them or have my mom and my aunt knit and share that with them. And then I think about the drawback to that. Um, which is that they would go shopping in my stash, which would be, that's a big drawback. You all know that's a big drawback. Um, it's bad enough when they come and they look at my stash and they're like, will you make me something out of that? Um, but that's okay because at least I'm still knitting with it because as I've said on several occasions, I am mostly a price process knitter. And so a lot of the time I just want to make the thing or knit with that yarn. Um, Therefore, it's okay if they're asking me to knit something for them out of yarn that I already have. However, if they were to take that same yarn and knit it themselves, then they're taking all of the joy away from me. I try not to be selfish, but it's hard when it comes to yarn. Uh, anyway, um, but... The bonus of that would be that I would be able to share things with them and they would appreciate this amazing deal or that beautiful pattern or that just um, unbelievably professionally dyed yarn. You know, that's kind of thing. So anyway, um, so let's get into uh, whips, I guess. I'll talk about whips. Oh, I lied. I totally lied. I do have an FO. I just don't have it here with me. I finished the Lava Lake Shawl by Stephen West, which I was knitting as a commission for Nicole Lo Nicole of Hugh Loco. I almost called her Nicole Loco. Um, and, uh, and I finished that and I sent it up to her and she has received it um, and she seems to like it. So, you know, that's always good. I really enjoyed making it. I knitted out of her Opal birthday set and... Um, well, you know what? I think I talk about all of it in the clip that I recorded a couple of days ago. So I'll put that in right here. Hello from the past. Uh, I wanted to uh, share the shawl that I finished for Nicole of Huloco uh, before I shipped it out, uh, which I need to do today. So um, I wanted to uh, record this really quickly so you guys could see the finished object. I love the way it turned out. Uh, this is the Lava Lake shawl by Stephen West, and I knit it out of Hugh Loco in her uh, Phyllis sock base, I believe, uh, using the Opal Birthstone colorway, uh, Opal Birthstone set, which is a set of 10 different colors. She's been doing it all year long with birthstones, 10 different colors that um, complement or... Uh, are reminiscent of the birthstone. I think the opal one is just about the prettiest thing I've ever seen. And um, I was super thrilled when Nicole asked me to knit this for her as a sample. Um, it's knit using the 50 gram set. I think she does a 20 gram and a 50 gram set. So this is the 50 gram. So it was, I had uh, 10 half skeins. I did not use them all. Um, in fact, you can see there's all my leftovers right there. I used more of some colors and less of others um, because I was trying to adjust it for um, 
going from a five skein uh, to a 10 skein and, um, and doing a couple other things slightly different, I had to kind of do the maths as I went along. And I think that if I were to do it again, I would make some changes, but I am very pleased with how it turned out. So here is the whole thing. Isn't it beautiful? I just love it. So um, the opal set comes with uh, a gray. I think this was her Earl Gray colorway. And then um, there's a lighter gray that's in the center. The rest of them are one-offs that are that were dyed just for this just for this set. But there it's done using a fade. Um, so you can kind of see how it fades in to with the different colors. And then the center, this is the other gray. Um, I can't remember that colorway, but oops. Um, that's one of the things that I would change is I would put a little bit more of that in the center, but, um, but I really like the way it turned out. It is knit from end to end. So um, that's a genius way to knit a shawl um, because you never have too many stitches on the needles. Um, there are 400, 600, 700 rows, thereabouts, um, for the entire thing. So if I were to knit this from, um, from the center, you know, out like a normal triangular shawl, I would, um, have had, you know, about 700 stitches on the needles, uh, as it was because I knit it this way. I only ever had, the most I had was, uh, at the point, which was just under 200. So it made it really manageable, really enjoyable to knit. Um, of course, it didn't help that the colors are amazing. This section right in here is my favorite. Um, and yeah, I highly recommend it. I, I love Nicole's colors for this. I love where her mind comes up with these colors. I just, oh, I just, I think it's perfect. So anyway, it is being shipped out to Nicole today, so um, I won't have it when I podcast, uh, which is why this little bit of video has been injected into my podcast. Anyway, bye. And so there you go. I, I knit that shawl. I really, really enjoyed it a lot. So um, that was fun. Nicole, of course, dyes amazing, uh, beautiful colorways, and that opal set was one of the most beautiful, um, although a lot of, it's just like, I haven't, I don't think there's really a colorway that she's made that I don't think is beautiful. Um, but the way that the shawl was designed to where you never had very long rows, um, and the changing of the colors, um, it really kept it all very interesting and, uh, and enjoyable. So yeah, I really enjoyed that. So that is my only FO. I don't have anything else that I have finished, um, but I have been knitting on some things and uh, I'll share those with you. So we'll go into whips. I do, uh, as you know, always, I have a sock on the needles. Um, I actually have the first one finished, so I have a hoe. I can show you that. There you go. Look at how pretty that is. Super Christmas. Um, if you have watched the podcast at all in the past three years, I've been trying to knit myself 31 pairs of Christmas socks to wear every day in December. I am so very close. I am, um, this is pair 29. I have knit more, uh, but some of them I took out for this year. I may have to put them back though, because I uh, just, I really don't have any sock knitting mojo right now, especially not Christmas sock knitting mojo. Um, I really, I just don't want to. I don't want to, I wanna knit other things. I wanna knit warm weather, th or things for, to keep warm in the cold weather. Um, I wanna knit sweaters and hats and 
gloves and those kinds of things and not socks at all. So I'm really struggling with this pair, but I, I don't think I'll have a problem getting this pair done because it's already halfway there, a little over halfway there. Um, but I don't know if I'm going to get to uh, those two right there, which is supposed to be pair 30 and 31. Um, I just I just don't know if I'm going to get them finished before the end of the month, end of uh, December. Um, so I think I might have to pull back. I think I took out two and put them just in my regular sock uh, drawer. Uh, it, it, I don't keep my socks in a drawer anymore. I've got these little containers that I got on Amazon that keep them individually in like little, like almost like a honeycomb type idea. I'll see if I can post a picture. Anyway, um, I saw so that I've just put them in my normal sock rotation. I think I might have to pull them out for this year and use them because yeah but I do love this sock just because I'm not keen on knitting on it does not mean it's not gorgeous because look at that how beautiful is that colorway this is so perfectly Christmas for me this is um, of course a Nidalee Things Vesper sock she's one of my absolute favorite dyers stripey dyers and um, well dyers um, but I particularly like her stripes. The colorway is the Holly and the Ivy. Um, I think it's one of her older Christmas colorways that she's kind of kept dying each year because it is uh, in pretty high demand. Um, so I managed to get a skein of it during um, uh, Simply Socks uh, Christmas in July sale. And, um, and it's just making the most perfect Christmas socks. As you can see, I've got the first one done. Let me say that again, because I've said it four times. As you can see, I've got the first one done. <laughs> I am working on the second one, um, and I've gotten that far. And the reason why I've gotten this far on this second one um, is because I've been in a position where I didn't have anything else to knit on on the go. And so I, I've worked on the sock. But I, again, I'm just not feeling socks at all right now, and, um, and I just want to knit on other things. So anyway, there you go. I think actually that shawl um, kind of messed up my sock mojo a little bit um, because it was so much fun and it was something I don't knit shawls very often because I don't wear them very often. Um, but it was it was fun and exciting and socks are kind of the same old, same old. Um, and because the weather is so beautiful right now, it's really chilly and, um, and just crisp. I want to wear all the knitwear and, you know, I wear socks all the time. So that there's nothing, God, I feel bad saying this, but there's, it's almost like there's nothing special about socks right now. And, and I want to knit all the, the special things. By the way, we haven't had any snow yet and it is, uh, November 21st. And uh, we are getting almost, we're like, we're just a few days short of having the longest period without snow here in Denver, which is crazy, especially when you think that last year, our first snowfall was, I think, September 8th, which was the earliest in a ridiculous amount of time uh, to get snowfall. So it's kind of interesting. Um, I was really excited about the fact that snow hadn't come all the way through October because I really love watching the, the leaves change and they change so beautifully here. Um, but once you get that first snowfall, it kills all, all the leaves and it weighs them down and they all just fall and they die and they don't look pretty anymore. Um, so I was able to watch the entirety of the leaves change, uh, but now they've, they've all changed and it's time for snow. <laughs> um, but it has been cold. We just haven't had a lot of pre precipitation. Um, okay. Other whips. I only have two more. Uh, one is a hat and this hat this poor hat has um, gone through some things because I've had to start it three times. Um, I got this skein a couple of years ago. Look at how pretty that is. This is uh, Hugh Loco um, in her DK base, uh, Moreno DK, uh, in the colorway Flower Child. And I got it, like I said, a couple of years ago at my local yarn shop, which is Colorful Yarns in Centennial, and I bought it with a pom-pom. 
I bought it with this pom-pom. This is faux fur, uh, faux raccoon fur uh, from McPorter Farms. McPorter Farms. And um, I loved this pom-pom. It was more of one of those things where I, I found the pom-pom and, um, and I had to find yarn to go with the pom-pom because I wanted the pom-pom so much. So um, that is what I picked. Um, it, it seemed to complement the pom-pom more when it was in the skein and not so much when it was, uh, what is this, caked up. But, um, but yeah, I still think it's going to look really good. Um, the blue wasn't quite as prominent as it seems to be right now. Anyway, uh, so I started, I was, I, was, I was like, you know what? It's starting to get cold. I've got super short hair. I just got my hair cut yesterday, so it's even shorter than normal. Um, and I need, I want to knit another hat. I like knitting hats, and I did a lot of hats in 2019. Um, and so, you know, I, I haven't knit, I don't know that I knit very many in 2020. I think I only knit two. So, um, so it was time to knit a new hat. Uh, anyway. So, and since I had this pom-pom already and it was just sitting over there kind of calling my name, I decided to go ahead and cast on this yarn. And initially I was, I just cast it on using my normal recipe that I, that I used for all of those hats that I knit in 2019 out of Lolo Did It yarns um, when I was doing the hippo for the holidays uh, knit along that she had. So yeah, I, I cast it on using my normal recipe that I've done for all of those other hats, which is a two by two rib for 40 rows, 96 stitches, folding it under, knitting the, the cast on and that row together to make a folded brim, um, adding an extra four stitches to make 100 stitches, knitting for like seven inches and then decreasing. It makes a really perfect warm beanie. Um, <clears throat> however, I got it cast on, I got about I don't know, 15 rows in, and I was like, you know, maybe I should try something new. So I went and looked. Um, I've seen a lot of, of stockinette hats, and so I decided to try that, and um, and it used a different stitch count, um, and I was a little bit concerned because it seemed a little small, but it was, it was mixing the colorway so perfectly. I wish that I had taken a picture of it because it really kept everything nice and modeled and there was no flashing, no pulling whatsoever. Um, it was really pretty, but I finished the brim and, uh, and I didn't like it. And I was like, I don't, I don't like how it fits. I don't like how it looks. So I ripped it all out again. And cause I, I, I knew I was going to want to wear this yarn. I made, I made pick this yarn out special for me to be a hat for me. So, um, so yeah, so I, then I went back to my original plan and cast on the two by two rib and here we go. So I'm getting a lot of pooling, uh, like a spiral pool, but I'm not, I'm not mad at that at all. I think it's beautiful. Um, I love how it kind of pulled differently on the brim than it did on the hat. Well, which makes perfect sense because I cast on an extra four stitches or I increased four stitches here for the hat part. And, um, and the brim is of course done with two by two rib, which is going to give you a different tension, but here you have it. Um, I was working on it the other day. We went over to a friend's house for dinner, so it's got a decent amount done. I'm actually not too far from, um, from starting some decreases. It's just going to be a simple beanie. I don't like them slouchy, so it's gonna. Like that. <laughs> I gotta finish it, of course. But yeah, that's basically it. Um, I do think that the uh, the pom pom goes nicely with it, and uh, yeah, I'm I'm happy. I think it's gonna be great. I can't wait for it to be finished so that I can wear it to work. I gotta fix my hair. So that is, um, there's that. Like I said, it's, it's a very simple recipe. And the only other whip I have is 
my shifty. Uh, this is the one that I showed you in my last podcast saying that once I finished the shawl, I was probably going to get back onto this, depending on how I felt. And um, I did give some serious thought to starting something new, but um, I've been a little bit on the go lately and I needed something that I didn't have to do a gauge swatch for and figure out what I was going to use and yada, yada, yada. Um, and so I just picked up the Swifty, uh, which is a pattern by um, Andrea Mallory. And I've made uh, some progress. So here's where I was the last time I showed it to you. So I've added a couple of uh, repeats of the blips. You've got the large blips and the small bl or big blips and small blips. So I was uh, right at the beginning of a small blip. And so I've done that and a large blip, small blip, large blip, small blip. I'm on the large blip. I've separated, separated, I've separated for the sleeves. I've separated for the sleeves. Um, and I separated for the sleeves. Mm, how many, two or three, uh, blip sections early. Um, I started reading through some of the pattern uh, some of the, some of the people who had made it their show note, their show notes, their project notes, uh, to see, uh, how it was going because the yoke seemed to be getting pretty deep. And I was, um, I still had, uh, several blips sections left and, and each blip section is about 12 rows. So, you know, that was going to be a significant amount and I don't like a deep yoke. Um, I don't like how that feels. I don't like how whenever I raise my arm, the whole sweater comes up. I just don't like that. So, um, so I like it to be a fitted, uh, you know, arm section. Um, so, so yeah, not a deep raglan or not a deep yoke. And the way that this is done, not to give away any secrets cause it is a paid for pattern, but you, um, you finish all your increases well before you, separate for the arms. And so, um, so I'd already increased as many stitches as I was going to be increasing. And it was just about, um, knitting the length until it was time to separate for the arms. And so I, uh, went ahead and put it on two long needles and tried it on with Ron pulling the back down while I pulled the front down, uh, you know, to, to have it set right. And yeah, it was plenty long. Um, so I went ahead and separated. I've only, only just separated. I only have that much <laughs> left. Um, and I also opted to cast on some extra stitches, uh, under the arms, not because I need it for the body, but because I need it for the sleeves. I find that I tend to struggle with, um, sleeves being tight, too tight if I make it fit my chest area. And, um, so I'm trying to offset for that. Uh, but yeah, I'm, I'm knitting this out of, um, uh, Wonderland fibers in the March hair base, which is, um, sport. And I'm knitting it out of a bunch of odds and ends, really. Um, I'd gotten several full skeins of this color, which is eat me, drink me. It's, it's a purple leaning gray and that's my main color. And then I had a half a skein of this, which was phantom wise, I believe. And I've had this actually for a long time. Um, it's the one, if you guys watched my sweater, um, uh, sweater parade from last week, by the way, thank you all for your wonderful comments. I will get the second half of that, uh, recorded hopefully this next weekend. But this was the purple that I used to finish up my mom's rainbow stripey sweater. Um, and so I had all of this left over and then I had this mini set, um, called five million kisses and it was all different shades of, um, pink and purple. Um, there's two more, but yeah, basically it's, basically all of these colors because I've used them all yet now at this point. Uh, anyway, so I've basically decided to put them together and I'm every other, every third one is the phantom wise because I have a lot of this. Um, 
but I do think that I am going to run out. Um, for example, this is all I have left of one of them, and that's not enough. So I may end up getting creative. Uh, I, I have decided I'm going to make this short-sleeved um, to here, like basically as long as, as these sleeves are on my shirt. I like that length for wearing pullovers in the office. Um, it helps me feel like I'm not overheating too much. Um, and for some reason, even with going like three quarter inch sleeves, going from here to here, that much extra wool just overheats me. Whereas if they're short sleeved, um, I, I like them more and I, and I wear them more often. So that's what I'm going to do. I think I'm going to get a little bit further down in the body and then I'm going to do the sleeves. I may end up having to do the remainder of the body in just the phantom wise. I'm not sure. I have enough yarn. Um, I have enough of the purples to do the whole sweater. I just don't know if I have enough to do them in this order, but I'm not sure that it would really matter because, um, they're not really following any great, um, pattern or anything like that. It's not like you're going to really be able to tell that I've kind of mixed them up. Uh, so yeah, that is what I've got to say about that. I'm really enjoying it, by the way. It is, it is a fun knit, um, especially now that the, the, um, rows have gotten shorter when, when, before I separated for the sleeves, it was quite a lot of stitches per row. And that was taking a little bit longer, but, um, but the, uh, the blips are done with mosaic knitting instead of stranded. So it, you know, you're just slipping on those mosaic rows. Um, so you're only ever having one yarn in your hand at any one time. Um, and yeah, that makes a huge difference. Okay. So that's all that I, that's all I've been working on. That's really all I've got to show you guys. Um, that's actively being knit. Um, I do have lots of plans, uh, to show you guys and, um, and then I've got some things that I have gotten recently. So, um, I get it. If that's not your bag, you, you're more than welcome to toodle on, uh, if you're just here for actual knitting, uh, but I'm going to show yarn and stuff like that now. So I've been, been planning kind of things and looking at what else I need to kind of clean up. Um, I do in, in January, I had posted my, my works, uh, UFO slash whips, um, depending on how old they were. And I wanted to get them all finished. Um, I have not accomplished that. Um, there are three left. Um, if you don't count the eight bit sweater, because I tore that out, but I am, um, in the process of knitting it into something else. Of course, that's what the, the shifty is. Uh, so so I kind of call that a win cause I frogged it, but, um, I do have, I do still have, um, a few projects that I showed that haven't been finished and are not going to be finished before the end of the year. Uh, this is one of them. This is going to be a long-term whip. I, I would love to say that I could get this done. I'm sure if I paid attention to it, I could get it done. But um, this is not going to be something, this is not something that I really enjoy. It takes a lot of brain space. I need to take it like on a, on a camping trip when we're just going to be sitting around the campsite talking because that's what it needs. It needs to be able to be focused. Each row has a lot of information and, um, <clears throat> and it's very slow going. Uh, this is, I don't remember what it's called. But it's by Kyle Vey. It's a shawl that's like feathers um, that kind of, kind of uh, connects at the neck. This is the neck part, so kind of 
kind of like that. <laughs> um, and, and it makes the feathers. So, um, there's several, there's a lot, lot, lot still left to do. Um, I'm knitting it out of this, um, yarn art flowers, which is cotton. And, um, it's one of those ones where each it's four strands and each strand changes color. And that's how you get the gradients. Um, but like I said, it takes a lot of attention and, um, there's there, none of this is intuitive knitting. None of it is intuitive knitting, at least not yet. So, um, so it's one of those ones that one of these days I know I'm going to get a bug and I'm going to want to finish it and I'm just going to knock it out. But until then, uh, I don't, I don't want to, <laughs> I don't want to, and you can't make me. So yes, I don't count that. Although I do love this bag, by the way, this is, uh, this was from, uh, Smoky Mountain Laurel. Um, and it holds this. And I think that I've put it in this bag specifically because, um, I want it to be a traveling project. This would be great for a road trip where I am stuck in the passenger seat or even in the back seat for hours and I can't do anything but look at this pattern. I also have the Fargo sweater, um, which at this point is a Fargo sleeve that is all I've made is one single sleeve. I decided sometime last year that I wanted to knit a sweater in pieces. And, um, for some reason I thought that a sweater knit in pieces and all mostage would be the best idea. <laughs> oh, not so much. Uh, and of course with hand dyed yarn. So I needed to, um, alternate skeins to keep it from pulling. It's, was, there was a lot of lot of love that went into this sleeve to get it finished. Um, this is, as I said, the Fargo sweater. It is knit out of Madeline Tosh Vintage in the Spectrum colorway, which is um, one of the first real sweater quantities of yarn that I bought for myself in its entirety. Um, not in, in a super cheap D stash or something like that. So it's got specialness. It's, it's, it's special to me. So, um, one of these days I am going to finish the Fargo. It may be, um, after I finish, um, my shifty, it's the only other sweater that I have on the needles. Um, but I do have a lot of sweaters in my head cause these doggone, um, designers keep designing things. And, and that makes me want to knit things. So anyway, that's in a llama bag. Um, I guess these are alpacas because they, they, they look like Peruvian alpacas. Um, it's a dirty bag. <laughs> Don't look at that side. Let's pretend it's clean. Anyway, um, yeah, so that's just kind of sitting there. My aunt made this bag for me, by the way. That's, that doesn't have any special shop or anything like that. Um, Let's see, what else do I have in it? Oh, okay, so in my owl bags, which I got from the Woolly Elephant uh, in England, um, is my, uh, this is also Knitterly Things Vesper Sock um, in the Sleepy Pumpkin patch. And, um, and this was an autumn sock, pair of socks that I was knitting for myself. Um, but as I said, I'm not feeling socks right now, so I, this has just been sitting there too. Um, it'll get finished eventually. Someday I'm going to need to be able to run out the door and not have to wind any yarn or start anything. And I will grab that sock and I will finish it. But the whole reason why I started that whole conversation was to say that this other project that I had announced in January is one that I am keen on finishing and that is because it's cold outside and this is a pair of mittens and this is a pair of special mittens. You can see that it's obviously too big for me and that is because it is meant to have um, an inner layer. This is the Northman mitts 
uh, which I started last year and got this far and then pittered out. Um, I'm knitting it out of MJ Yarns. Uh, this colorway is Garnet, and it's just about the most beautiful color I've ever seen. Um, and then this blue is Aquamarine. These are both, did I say, MJ Yarns? Um, yeah, in the Quan Yin base. Um, and then there's going to be an inner layer, and that's going to be knit out of this. This is um, Wonderland Yarns, that same that I'm making the shifty out of, the same um, Mad Hatter base, sport base. And that will be the inside of these mitts. And I'm thinking these would be great right now because it is chilly, chilly, chilly outside. And as I've mentioned before, my kids steal my fingerless gloves all the time or mittens or whatever else I've I've knit for myself for my hands. So hopefully after I finish my shifty and my hat, I might get started on these. But of course, because it's color work, I have to look at the chart. The chart means I have to pay attention, which means I can't do it while I'm watching TV and stuff like that with my family. And that makes it more difficult. This is also a beautiful bag. This is by You So and So. I don't know that she goes by You So and So anymore, but that was her shop name back then. I don't remember what she's called now, but I love this bag. Um, I love uh, anthropomorphic animals. Um, I really do. And I love fall. So, yeah. Uh, I said that I was kind of in, kind of a little all over the place and I apologize, but these are all things that I'm planning on knitting soon or thinking about knitting soon, possibly might be knitting soon or later. I don't know. Uh, but I was at the yarn shop with a friend and, uh, she is the mother of my daughter's best friend. Um, the one I made gloves for, uh, for Christmas last year. I think I made her red gloves and then maybe it was 2019. Anyway, I made the fingerless gloves. Delaney's are purple and gray. They were all out of, um, little out of, um, Lolo did it in her hippo colorways and Susan's were red. And then, um, Anai, I don't remember what color Anai's were. Unfortunately, Anai has moved away, so we don't get to see her anymore, but, but they all three had matching fingerless mitts. And, um, anyway, so Susan's mom, Jen, my friend, uh, has been wearing Susan's and, um, uh, they, she, and she, she was like, you know, I've stolen Susan's because of the right color to match with the hockey team. Susan plays hockey. And, um, and so I said, well, I can make you a pair for yourself that you don't have to, to steal your daughters. Um, and she is never one to take advantage. And so I had to kind of convince her that I really wanted to do that. Uh, so we, since we were at the yarn shop, she picked up the yarn. It is this beautiful color. It is, uh, chasing rabbits, uh, in her fern base. And the colorway is called colorful November. So I don't know if it was this November. It's beautiful. Um, and I'm going to make, they're going to be kind of special, um, she needs to be able to still use her phone. So it's going to be like a mitten on these fingers and then fingerless gloves coming up to here on, um, maybe a mitten for these three fingers and just her pointer finger and her thumb as, um, fingerless gloves with the tip coming all the way up to here so that she can stay as warm as possible but still use her phone and her camera because she records the games and stuff like that. And it just happened to be that the next day or even that very, very same day, my mom asked for the same idea. She wants to be able to play her games on her tablet and, um, but, but her hands get cold. So she asked for similar gloves. And so I'm making her, um, a pair out of this. This is, um, this is old, um, Oh gosh, what's it called? Um, Yarn Cafe Creations. Um, I gotta sneeze. Nope. In her full body sock. This is like um, an old colorway 
back when when she was still new before she, before she was as amazing I well, no, I shouldn't say that not as amazing because she's always amazing uh Christy who dies for uh Carl, Yarn, um Yarn Cafe Creations but um she was a small shop then and anyway this is her Kelpie colorway uh it's super pretty and perfect for my mom so um those will be coming soon um I just need to start them and then of course I want to knit all the sweaters all the sweaters um I keep looking at um at stuff on on Ravelry I, I look all I, I just I'm like I'm spending time just trolling through stuff and making plans and whatnot um I found this sweater um it's a, it's a, it more like a, a blouse or a, a top you know it's but I, I'm always interested in things that I can knit in the office or uh, not not knit in the office but wear in the office because I like to wear my hand knits and I don't spend enough time outside to be able to wear a lot of heavy pullovers and stuff like that so I'm trying to find things that I can you know put into my wardrobe and wear throughout the year um would be perfect but even if it's just during the the fall winter and spring that would be fine um and so i found this and um this designer i can't think of his name right now but uh, he's he has got all of the quirk <laughs> like he's awesome um and i love his confidence um i'm not sure that there's a lot of his things that i would really want to make for myself but i saw this and i loved it um it's meant to be knit out of noro um and i don't really have a lot of noro um but i did have a single skein of this this is uh unique worsted which is really a um a striper but it kind I feel feel like it might work because it's meant to have long color repeats and this kind of does and um, my local yarn shop had it on sale this month so I went back and got three more skeins so now I have four skeins total which should be enough to knit that uh, that top and so um, I'm keen on that and then I was also watching somebody and I forgive me can't remember who but they <clears throat> talked about this cardigan which is knit or not I'm sorry it's crocheted out of granny squares and it's adorable I don't really crochet I have made very small very few things with with crochet but I am interested in it and I love the look of this and granny squares are not hard so you know I could do that and and I like that it takes uh it's a it, knit with D worsted worsted I think um, and you don't need very many skeins of each of the colors and so I have forgive me I don't know where they are but I have some oh, found them. I have two skeins of this bare MCN worsted um, I've had for a long time it it was something I think I swapped for because I was gonna try dying um, I never died uh, I still haven't gotten to it but I have two skeins which is the right amount of yardage for something like this I have two of these and then I have two of these this is MJ Peruvian dreams um, it's an alpaca yarn 50% alpaca, 30% merino, and 20% silk. It is like butter. Um, so soft. I think it will work for something like this. I, I wouldn't want to, I don't know if I'd want to make a whole garment out of this alone, but, um, but I think it'll work for this kind of idea. So there's two colors. And then I have these two skeins of Dream and Color Classy in the Flower Drum Song. I don't know why I only picked up two skeins because I would have loved to have made a whole sweater out of this, but I didn't. Uh, so I only have two skeins. It just happens to be the right amount of yardage for this sweater. And then I have, as a main color, um, 
enough skeins of this Malrios in Azul Profundo, which is a nice uh, navy royal blue. And I think, I mean, you guys can tell me if I'm wrong, but I think that these are going to be so pretty together. And yeah, so that's kind of what I'm thinking about that. I'm still ruminating on it. I still have to like practice making granny squares. It's been very long time since I tried making granny squares. That was, I tried to crochet before I learned how to knit and it was a disaster. Um, but, uh, but that's what I was making was my uh, granny square blanket. And I never, I mean, I got, oh, not very far. My mom ended up having to finish the blanket. Um, and because she's not the greatest crocheter either, um, we ended up having to have like a master crocheter that we knew from church fix it because <laughs> it didn't stay together very well. And yeah. So anyway, um, the, and in my mom's defense, because she did try to teach me, but I was certain that I needed to do it left-handed. And, and so I was trying to do all of those crochet techniques holding the, the hook in my left hand. And it, 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 I couldn't make it work that way. I'm sure that there are people who can, but I couldn't. And my mom didn't know enough about crochet to, uh, to be able to work that out for me. And now when I do crochet, I hold the hook in my right hand, like, like everybody else or most everybody else. And, you know, hold, gauge my yarn, tension my yarn with my left hand. Like I do knitting anyway. Uh, so those are things that I am planning on working on. But I'm telling you what, I look down here, this is all where my sweater yarn is right here, and I, oh, it doesn't take me long before I'm like, oh, well, maybe I could make a sweater out of that. I have this beautiful Dream and Color City, or I'm sorry, Quirky in the Colorway City, and, um, or maybe it's City in the Colorway Quirky. I think it's the Colorway Quirky, and that's a sweater's quantity, and I'm like, I could... I could just work on that instead. And then I feel guilty because I have got yarn that I've had for years and I haven't touched it and I need to work on that. And uh, yeah, so um, I do have a couple more things that I want to go over with you. Um, some things that I, I wanted to show you from um, yarn uh, from, I went, oh, what did I do? I went to a, I went to a craft fair. Uh, there was a craft fair in Douglas County, which is in Castle Rock, which is close to us. And um, I went there and I got a couple of things that I was keen on. Look at that. Isn't that cute? This is an advent tree. It's got one socks in it. <laughs> Um, so I put the socks in boxes. Um, I wish that I had had a pair of socks with me, uh, because these boxes are just a, like a quarter inch too small. Um, the socks fit in there, but they fit in there very tightly. I'm, I'm wondering if maybe I should take and, um, only put one sock in there and have its pair sitting aside. Because if you recall last year, I said that I wanted it to be kind of like a surprise. So I have done that and, and now it's a surprise, but, um, they don't all fit exactly. And then they've been popping their tops a little bit. Um, but this was one of the things that I got. It totally could have been something that I could have made myself. Um, but, but I wanted to support, um, a small maker and, um, and I didn't want to have to go through the hassle of making it myself. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, so there's that. It only holds 25, of course. Um, and I have 31 or will have 31 pairs. Um, so I have to kind of figure out something to do for the future for those extra pairs right now. I just have a couple of these little gift boxes, um, that my mom's letting me borrow that I'll put, um, the extra pairs of socks in there and wear, use those for those last couple of days of December. Another thing that I got, um, was actually a really good deal. 
um, was there was a polymer clay gal and she made these um, handles for an interchangeable crochet hook set. So it's got hooks from size C to H and um, space for, for more, I guess. Um, she did give me the, the place where I could get the rest. Um, but they were really, it was, it was not very expensive. $30 maybe. Um, and you just pop them in like that and you've got your hook. Um, I don't know if they're the best hooks in the world, but I do like the, instead of being more rounded, they're, they're more sharp at the tip there. And that's what I like. And so, so yeah, I thought that was kind of cool. Um, maybe that means that I can, uh, use that to, to make that, that cardigan. Um, And then lastly, I, oh, I also got a, a, a my, my other, um, advent, uh, which I got from, sorry, Wanderlux Fibers. I was going to try to read that through the camera, but it's backwards. It's mirrored. Uh, so I got the 12 advent. It came with 12 mini skeins and a sparkle base with extra surprises. I've already started opening it. There's some of it right there. Um, so I won't talk a lot about it because it's not December yet. Um, but I thought, you know what? I, I'd rather have it last longer than have more to open the first 12 days of the month. So I'm opening those here the last 12 days of November. And then I'll start with Uh, this one, which is DK from Big Sky Fibers, uh, for Big, yeah, Big Sky, Big Sky Yarn Company. Um, I'm super excited about this one because like I said, it's, it's DK and I'm going to make a sweater out of it. I'm going to make the, um, the Gartrell. I don't know if I'm going to make the pullover or I'm going to make the cardigan. Um, I keep going back and forth about it because the cardigan will get worn more but I don't know. I don't know. Let me know what you think. I'm going to, I'm basically going to do it like, like an advent project. So each day I open one of these, I'm going to put it into that sweater and, um, and go from there. So they don't have to follow any, um, color match or anything like that. And then there's a full skein in here, which I will use for the button bands, for the cuffs, for the collar and that kind of thing. Um, so yeah, there, there should be enough in here to make that, but we'll see how it goes. Um, this one I'm, I'm super excited about. And of course, I have the Firefly Notes, um, stitch marker one, which, uh, I'm also very excited about. So those will, those will get open next week and not next week, but the first, um, and yeah, I'm just the, the, the one from wonder luck fibers, uh, it just because it was, it was 12 days. I just figured, yeah, might as well just, um, start opening it now. I didn't want to wait. <laughs> Um, I have one more thing to show you guys, and it's actually going to be a giveaway as well. I got, so Lisa at Hey Crafty Creations contacted me again and asking if she could share some of her Christmas, uh, stitch mark, progress keepers rather, not stitch markers, uh, that she had made. Um, she's doing this, um, like a, like a Christmas grab bag, um, which is an amazing idea. I really love the things that she makes. So she sent me some, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm holding this like I can't show it to you. Uh, she sent me some, this is her, this is her shop. And then she's also, um, having another giveaway. So, um, we'll have a giveaway here and it'll go, it'll actually be shipped directly from her this time. Um, so just, and it's just going to be one, uh, one of her, um, 
Christmas grab bags. Totally recommend that you um, check it out because it's adorable. Uh, by the way, my Crafty 10 um, coupon code is still active. So if you guys want to go in and purchase one of her gift bags, or, or surprise bags, then um, I would highly recommend that too because you can get 10% off. Um, but it came in this cute little Santa bag and there's a bunch of um, confetti in there. Christmas, ah, you can't see that. Christmas confetti and um, deers and trees, and snowflakes. Um, there was a little Santa sticker and a snowflake. Um, there was a little lollipop, candy cane. Let's see, what else was in there? Oh, well, the big item was her 2021 Christmas collection. Now her, um, surprise grab bags, uh, they have different sizes. I think this is the maximum. Um, so it came with like all of them, but, uh, they're amazing. Lisa, you were so generous, really. Um, so there's this stocking. There's Santa. There's a gingerbread house. So cute. Of course, you can never go without a skull, a Santa skull. Um, there's a candy cane and a a Christmas tree, but the best one, hands down, the best one. An Italian leg lamp. It's Italian. Fragile. <laughs> anyway, um, so yeah, uh, we'll be giving away one of her surprise sets and, um, and then, uh, there's also the coupon code crafty 10. Um, and that gives you 10% off. So, uh, all you have to do to win is put a comment down below about your favorite Christmas memory. Um, and, uh, yeah, and I'll draw in my next podcast and, uh, Lisa will send the, the thing directly to you from her shop. So yeah, um, I guess that's it guys. Um, have a wonderful rest of your day. Happy Thanksgiving. Cause I won't see you before then and happy knitting. Bye.